morning. We are continuing on with our next section of geometry today, looking at section 1.3. So on this first page, we're going to talk about collinearity, betweenness, and assumptions. And then on the back side, we're going to work some problems. So this whole front page is just some vocabulary and conceptual stuff. So let's start right off the bat with collinear versus non-collinear. These are both vocab terms that we talked about with our vocab page. Collinear means all of the points lie on the same singular line, and non-collinear means they do not lie on the same line. So an example of each is here, A, B, and C. There is one line that connects all three points, so we can call them collinear. But then below, X, Y, and Z, because of where they're positioned, I cannot draw a single line to connect all three. Therefore, they are non-collinear. Um, on a similar tone, betweenness of points. If the points are collinear, then we can say when one is between the other. But if they're not collinear, we cannot use the word between. So on this line, B is between A and C. Or on this one right here, T is between A and R. But over here with X, O, and Y, we can't say one of them is between the other because I can't draw one line to connect them all. So betweenness can only exist when the points all lie on the same line. Okay, our last conceptual piece of information today is on assumptions. So when you're given a diagram, there are things that are safe to assume without being told, and there are things that you cannot assume without being told otherwise first. So we have our list of each here, things you can assume, straight lines and straight angles, and remember straight angles are equal to 180 degrees collinearity, betweenness, and again, they can only be between each other if they're collinear, and relative location. These are all safe to assume. Things you cannot assume, even if it looks like it's true, are right angles, congruent segments or angles, or relative size. So that would be like one segment or angle looks bigger than the other. Even if it looks that way on the diagram, that's not something we can assume. So looking at this picture we're given below, let's make a list of things that we are safe to assume, and things that even though they might look true, we cannot assume those things. So starting with safe assumptions, straight lines and straight angles. Every line I see in this diagram I can assume is straight. Um, where do I have straight angles? Right here, angle BCE is a straight angle. I can assume that. And similarly, angle ACD is also a straight angle. I can assume that. So that means those are both equal to 180 degrees. Um, collinearity, ACD are collinear. On that same token, BCE are collinear. And betweenness, C is between A and D. And C is also between B and E. So those are all things that are safe to assume from this given picture. Now some things that might look to be true, but if I'm not explicitly told, I cannot just assume. Um, it does kind of look like I have right angles here, like angle BAC is a right angle. Angle CDE looks like a right angle. Um, it looks like segment AC is bigger than segment CD. Um, it also might look like segment BA is shorter than segment DE. and many, many more. So even though these look like they're true, we can't solve problems assuming that they are if we haven't been told otherwise, okay? So let's put some of these assumptions to good use. On number one, I'm told angle one is four X minus 19, and angle two is seven X minus 21. Find the measure of angle one. Well, if I'm gonna find the measure of angle one, I need to know what X is. So we're going to have to use this given information to write an equation that will allow me to solve for x. Well, 
I can assume straight angles. And from this diagram, angle one and angle two are forming a straight angle, which means their sums are going to add up to 180. So if I replace those with my x expressions, I can use that to solve for x. Combine my like terms. And I get that x is 20. Now that I know x, to find angle 1, I'm going to plug it back in for 4x minus 19. And that's going to be 61 degrees. So this is a way you can use an assumption to solve a problem. Moving on to number two, let's talk about tick marks. So this was, again, another term that was on our vocab page, but we haven't seen it in action yet. So on this diagram, I actually have two different tick marks. I've got these little hashes, one hash each, and I've got these two open circles. Those are both examples of tick marks. You might also see multiple hashes, like two hashes, three hashes, etc. If the tick marks match each other, the segments that they're on are congruent. So notice my two yellow pieces. Those are on segment UW and VW. Because those tick marks match, that is how I know that those two segments are congruent. When the diagram gives you markings like that, that is when it is safe to say, I've been told these are congruent, or if it would be in the words of the problem. Again, these two open circles are on UY and VY, and because they match, those two segments are also congruent. Okay, so again, if you had two ticks, three ticks, as long as they're matching, that is how you know that something's congruent. And then our last problem for these notes, um, I've given a diagram and some information, so I'm going to label my diagram with these givens. Angle DEG is X plus 3Y. Angle GEF is 2X plus Y. And angle DEF is a right angle, which means it's equal to 90 degrees. And then we're also told that DEG is congruent to GEF. So these two angles are congruent to each other. Find the values of x and y. When I have two variables I need to solve for, this means I'm going to need a system of equations. So a system of equations means I have two variables, and I have to have two equations in order to solve them. Now for this one, I'm not given those equations. I have to write them myself using the information I was provided. So. Off the bat, one thing that I could write is that these two smaller angles are adding up to 90 because they're forming a right angle. So x plus 3y plus 2x plus y is equal to 90. I'm going to go ahead and consolidate my like terms, combine my x's and my y's so that it's a little bit shorter. So there's one equation. Now I need another equation. Well, my two smaller angles are congruent to each other. So I can say that x plus 3y is equal to 2x plus y because if the angles are congruent, they have the same measure. Again, I want to clean this up a little bit. Let's get everything on one side. So I'm going to move over 2x and the y. And that will leave me with negative x plus 2y equals 0. There's nothing left on the other side. So I now have my two equations to solve. And this is where you can use either substitution or elimination, whatever your preference is, to solve the system. I prefer elimination. My x's are already oppositely signed, so I'm going to cancel my x's. If I multiply this second equation by 3, then I'm going to have 3x and negative 3x, and my x's will cancel. So when I multiply everything by 3, I get negative 3x plus 6y equals 0. When I add my two equations together, the x's add to 0. I get 10y is equal to 90. And then I can find that y is 9. Now that I know what y is, I have to plug it back in to find x. And you can do that for any of these equations. This one has the smallest number, so I'm just going to go with that one. Negative x plus 2 times 9 equals 0. 
If I add x to the other side, I get that x is 18. So my solution is 18 comma 9, ordered pair. Remember, x goes first and then y. And that will wrap up our 1.3 notes for today.